Let's now explore file types and permissions. We'll unlock the screen and continue our studies. So we've talked about user management using system config users and the various shell tools, user mod, user add, user del, group mod, group add, group del. Now it's time to discuss file types as well as permissions and then we'll move on to symbolic links after that. So what are the features provided by Linux? Well there are a number of different types of files so classification of files which is important because it allows processes and users or various subjects to be able to interact with different types of files on different levels such as character devices versus block devices for example as well as permissions permissions allow us to restrict access to content so it works in conjunction with classification on a different level with respect to data classification but nonetheless it's an important feature of an operating system and certainly Linux is no stranger to this phenomenon of restricting access to content. But the permissions are arranged in a way that is unique to Unix and Linux environments and differs from Windows environments, so it's worth a study. So first, let's talk about the various classification of files. These are common ones. So tasks, and the first is classification of files. This is a brief talk and it isn't comprehensive but it covers many of the common types of files that you see. Now the utility that you use to explore files is LS. Certainly you could use Nautilus in GNOME which is the equivalent of Windows Explorer or Finder in Mac to explore content and use the mouse to interact with various files to determine the properties. But a much faster or more expedient method is to simply use ls. So use ls with the long form to identify or expose file properties. And that will lend you some insight, some quick insight into bulk items, the properties of bulk items. Graphically the GUI shows you folders versus files which will visually distinguish between them but then it doesn't distinguish at least on the surface easily other types of files like character devices, name pipes, block devices for storage and so on which is why LS is the tool that is more advantageous in most environments. Now let's take a look at a common directory. Let's drop root privilege. In fact, we'll just use this shell and keep the root window open. Let's navigate to our home directory. We're currently logged in as Linux CBT. So when we use ls, we see no indication of the various file types. We see a list of files presented in as many columns will fit in the window and as many rows. However, if we use it with the long form, all of a sudden, a number of fields or columns become visible. So what we see if we take any of these items such as 1 million dot text for example are a number of bits to the left of the file name. Let's copy this block and analyze it briefly just to give you a sense for what's happening here. So when we look at this particular entry in the directory we suppose it's a file because it's named 1 million dot text and we presume whenever we see a suffix that's three characters that it means it's some sort of file. But that isn't necessarily true because you could make a directory named 1million.txt. The way that you know it's really a file is that in the leftmost section where the permissions are organized there are 10 bits that correspond to classification of the file and the permissions associated with that file. In Linux and Unix, all things are files, and all files are accessible to the root user, and so on. So permissions have to be associated with these things called files, whether they're directories or files or special types of files like character devices, block devices, etc. The leftmost of the 10 bits, again, if we count the bits, the leading or leftmost bit 
is the classification bit. The nine bits that follow cover permissions, which we'll look at shortly. This leading bit for this particular object, 1 million dot text, contains a hyphen. And that's your first indicator. So when you see hyphen in the leading bit, it means that it is a standard file, meaning it's not a directory. So that's how you know from the dump the leading bit is a hyphen. That's how you're sure that the object is a file and not a directory. Now the shell in Red Hat Enterprise Linux is set to colorize certain objects. For example, these compressed items are represented using the color red. Standard files are represented with black. Directories are represented with blue and so on. Scripts or executable items with green. This color scheme tends to be standard in Linux, but since you are able to alter your shell, changing the color and so on, you can't always rely upon the color scheme that's present. So it's better to rely upon the standard Linux attributes associated with files. So the leading bit when contains a hyphen indicates that the object is a file. Now let's take this particular directory desktop for example, which represents our desktop behind this window and the gedit window. This entry, let's place it between single quotes, represents a directory because the leading bit is a D. This means it's a directory. So the first bit is a D, the object is a directory. The remaining nine bits represent the permissions associated with the object. The trailing dot is unimportant it's unused. So it's first bit followed by nine bits or a total of 10 bits. So this means we have a directory in desktop regardless of the colorization. But we should just note anyway, note Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6 uses color patterns or templates for classifying files. And what we have seen is that when you see, for example, black, it means that it's a file, standard file. But this is all subject to change. Blue, directory. Red, compressed file. And green is an executable. But we should just note the color pattern is subject to change. So don't always rely upon it. Unless, of course, you never change your environment and you use solely the defaults. But with that said, the hyphen is a standard file. D is a directory. These are the common types of files that you're likely to see in your environment. But there are, of course, other types of files. For example, let's navigate into the dev tree. If we LSL in this directory, notice, let's take any of these items, doesn't matter. We'll take a pseudo terminal, for example. Let's take pseudo terminal one. Pseudo terminal one has a C in the leading bit. So it's neither a hyphen nor a D. And that tells us that it's a character device. So let's paste this in between single quotes to indicate that it's something that was extracted verbatim. And this tells us that it's a character device. What's a character device? Well, it's a device or a facility that supports the display of characters. So when you access TTY1, you're basically accessing a facility that echoes characters. There are other types, of course. Let's take a look. Here's a type for symbolic link. We're going to be looking at symbolic links momentarily, which links standard error to file descriptor 2. In fact, let's look at standard in, which is the first file descriptor defined, and that's file descriptor 0. Standard out is 1, and standard error is 2. So here is a different type between single quotes. And this leading bit 
contains an L, which means it is a link. It's a symlink, or a symbolic link. A symbolic link means it's a shortcut to the real object, which means dev stdin is really a reference to proc, which is a dynamic file system created in memory, so it's available when the kernel is up and running, self fd for file descriptor, zero. So references to standard in are really pointed to file descriptor zero. We see some links for standard out, standard error, which is file descriptor two, which is why when you're referencing the redirection of standard error in your command sets, you reference two, systtty, links to dev tty zero, and a number of other sim links are present. Now let's look at another type, block device. So we've got a hard drive SDA, and of course we've created partitions on it, SDA1 and SDA2. Notice the leading bit of B, which means it's a block device, a storage device, a device which provides blocks of storage. Now of course, df-h will show SDA1, and it is the boot partition for our environment and it's represented as a block device. fdisk L shows everything. If we scroll towards the top, we should see in the dump dev SDA, which is the block device, 80 gigs, SDA1, which is a fraction, and let's see what else is defined in here, some other items. So now let's go ahead and paste this in. And we should also note, just because you see a block device like SDA2 doesn't mean it actually exists. It's a placeholder in the event that it's needed. If it doesn't exist at the time. So block or storage device. Which means if you plug a USB stick in, it will be created in the dev tree as a block device. Because it's a storage device, it provides blocks of storage. So storage device, meaning, of course, hard drive, USB stick, etc. So, so far we've seen file, directory, character device, symbolic link, block device. And if you search through dev, you'll find a number of other devices. If you pipe the output to less and just take a look at it slowly, you'll see various devices but the common ones in dev are character block, symbolic link, but you have other types, such as name pipes, etc. And in proc, which is the virtual file system, you'll see some of the same types, files, directories, etc. So those are your common classification of file types across Linuxes and Unices, or Linuxin or Unixin. Either way you cut it. Now, how about permissions associated with these various devices? Now, as standard users, we interact largely with a subset of these classifications, which include, but not limited to always, hyphen for, direct, for file, D for directory, L for symbolic link. Those are the three types that we often deal with. Of course, as a systems administrator, We'll deal with block devices, usually when we're setting up the system and sometimes when we need to provision additional storage. Now the permissions, as we've mentioned, are represented by the nine rightmost bits. So, represented by nine rightmost bits in 10-bit permissions block. So let's take an example, let's say of the one million dot text entry and discuss the permissions associated with this object. So there we've got 10 bits to the left, ignore this trailing dot, it's unimportant. 